So I'm back from Dublin after doing the Dublin City Marathon yesterday, um, which I've done for the last 20 years. So it's something my, my wife and myself have been doing every year. It's a strange date weekend, but we do enjoy it. There was something that I wanted to blog about since Friday and um, because, you know, I haven't had the time to do it, but it's been going around in my mind. And I just thought this is such an amazing and incredible story in many ways that I, I just thought I needed to let people know about it. Anyway, on Friday on Friday morning, I, I was thinking of going to Knock Friday afternoon. It was in the back of my mind all week, go to Knock Friday afternoon. Uh, but, you know, me going to Dublin Friday evening, driving to my mother's and, you know, working. And so I don't know, should I go? Should I not go? And anyway, at about 10.30 on Friday morning, uh, a man sends me a text and he says, uh, look, we're in uh, Knock, my, my, my wife and myself are in Knock and we just want to talk to you, um, you know, the, to get some, um, have a chat and, and discuss uh, things about the faith. And, and, and I said, well, look, do you know what? I'm only half or an hour away from Knock. So I uh, finished work early on Friday and drove to Knock. Um. And we had an amazing conversation about the faith. They have a large family and, you know, the, the, the different struggles that all families have. But one thing that struck out that really stuck with me in during that conversation was an incident that happened this year when the family was in Italy. Uh, this is a family that loves the Eucharist, loves our Lord and have tried to catechize their kids on the Eucharist uh, so that they, you know, grew up to be Catholics who love the faith that go to Mass that will, that will in turn lead, bring their own children to Mass but their 13 year old daughter was at Mass in Italy like they, they went to to Mass while they were in Italy and um, they went up for communion knelt down and the priest was saying get up get up get up and of course the child wasn't having anything of this she'd been catechized to receive communion on the tongue which is still the norm of the roman rite you can still do this and this whole pandemic thing is all gone now so you can still go and receive communion on the tongue kneeling if you want to nobody can deny you this but anyway the priest wasn't too happy to ha to give her communion on the tongue uh, but he finally gave her communion on the tongue and as she was standing up he slapped her on the cheek and i heard this story i said that is atrocious way to to treat a child. I mean, thank uh, Irish priests. I think would know a little bit better not to touch a child, but this Italian priest, I don't know what was going through his mind that he felt he had to slap her because of her reverence for the Eucharist. You know, sixty years ago, no priest in the Roman Rite would ever slap a child for kneeling to receive our Lord on the tongue. And yet, in 2023, uh, the church is scratching its head. How can we bring the youth back to the church? How can we do this? How can we do that? And when the youth do appear, <laughs> they happen to be pious. They happen to love our Lord. They happen to go to confession, know what sin is, you know, normal. Normal Catholics, really. Normal Catholics. Uh, they, they, they get a slap on the cheek for receiving communion, kneeling on the tongue. So I said to the family, look, I, I was going to blog just about that. So, you know, I wasn't going to talk about the family too much, you know, you know, their private family life. But I, I, I just thought, you know, that was really, really a sickening, um, you know, and there's a lot of debate about this in the church. There's a lot of debate about how we how we should receive communion. There is this thing, oh, we should go back to the way the early church did this, the early church did that. It's as if for 2000 years, the Holy Spirit was completely, completely absent from the church. And, and it's only the early church that can save us now. If we just do what the early church did, forgetting about, you know, saints like St. Teresa of Lisieux, how she would have received communion. But anyway, this is the madness you have in the church. They're scratching their heads trying to get the youth into the church, engage the youth with the faith. And when youth do get engaged, oh no, no, we don't like that type of engagement. That's too traditional. Kneeling to receive our Lord in the tongue, that's too traditional. And on the other side, you know, oftentimes we criticize the traditional movement because they say, just go to a traditional Latin Mass, don't be going to the Novus Ordo. 
and I've I've never said that. I've never said to families uh, avoid the Novus Ordo. I said you know we should always go to mass. The mass is the mass. But if they're going to slap your child on the on the cheek for wanting to receive communion, kneeling in the tongue, um, some families would rethink what where they're going to bring their kids to mass to, especially if they're on holiday. What type of reception are you going to get as a family? You know, um, you know, it's it's a mixed bag. I, I'm just saying this, and I've been refused communion for wanting to receive on the tongue. Um, and I've never protested and I've never and I've just politely asked. But, you know, I think it's 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 a very sad situation. And we see this on media. We see it in bishops in Brazil, uh, priests in different places. We see it in the Vatican, you know, that they, they refusing to give communion on the tongue. It's not isolated. It's not isolated incidents. You really see a divide in the church, in the Roman rite on how we treat the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord. And I don't, I don't understand this divide at all. And it's not like I'm making a political statement or trying to divide the church. But if you want, if you want, if you want to teach your kids that the Eucharist is precious, you have to treat the Eucharist as if it is precious. Uh, to the same level as you would treat gold or something else that's precious. You know, and, re and you know, reverently receive the Eucharist. Reverently. There's a beautiful, it's a beautiful tradition in the traditional Latin Mass to go up and receive the Eucharist. You know, you go up, you kneel down, you close your eyes, you open your mouth. Um, you don't have to say Amen because in the old rite you didn't. The priest says the Amen. Our Amen doesn't make the Eucharist more Eucharist or less Eucharist. It is the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And a good catechized person will reverently receive our Lord and, and you know, and enter into that, to that beautiful unit of prayer, you know, in, in the Mass. But, you know, all of the, we seem to be, we seem to have lost these beautiful ways of receiving communion in the church. But I do think that that girl was very brave to show reverence, to kneel before the king. Because in between the priest and that girl is our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the priest acts in persona Christi. And Christ would never have slapped that girl. Never. Never. You know, that priest is holding the body, blood, soul and divinity. And he is there to minister in persona Christi and to bring that. Now, I'm not going to say the diocese in Italy or, 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 or cause a storm in the church and put the bishop be invaded. This story will go out and it's an actual story. It actually happened. It was an Irish 13-year-old girl this year on holidays in Italy. Um, and actually during the same mass they were saying because there there, there, it's a large family they also saw the host being dropped on the floor during another another person was receiving communion the host was dropped on the floor so I mean we do have a bit of craziness going on in the church that we actually don't know what how to reverence our Lord in the Eucharist um, but this is where the story really got interesting for me this was where the story so we were in Knock the family talking together and um, and just as we were leaving we were walking towards the apparition chapel and the man started to talk about you know uh, his family's faith and his mother and then I had to stop him about I was there in the plaza I said so that is your mother because on Wednesday evening I had been reading about a particular lady here in Ireland who had, uh, uh, and I'll do a whole episode on this because I, I need to do it justice. But I've been reading about this man's mother. And I was thinking, God, I shouldn't get in touch with her to see if I could do an interview. I'd love to expend out in the story because she had an amazing story, this woman. Uh, I didn't connect her to him because she went by her maiden name in the work that she did. But he, uh, he, he, he spoke to me about this mother. I said, this is really strange that on Wednesday evening, and I had to go home and check my browser history. What day was I reading about his mother? And I didn't blog about this. There's no nothing in my channel speaking about this lady. But I was just there thinking, I'd love to get in touch with this lady. And sadly, she is not able to give an interview. She's way too old now and she has Alzheimer's. So I, I won't be able to interview her. But it's interesting that this this woman I was trying to get in touch with her son on a, on a Friday morning would send me a WhatsApp message asking to meet me 
And I was thinking, if if she could blog now, she would have blogged about her grandchild being slapped for receiving our Lord Jesus Christ on the tongue, reverently kneeling for him. She would have blogged. She would have gone to the media. She absolutely would. Because uh, this, this woman is a, is, a, is a woman of incredible faith. And, and, I'm, and I will expand out on this more. But I can also see the hand of Our Lady in this whole story. It was really strange. It was, it was like heaven sending a message that me reading about her, this lady and then speaking to her son two days later uh, and then the story about, uh, about the, this girl, the, her granddaughter, you know, it was just amazing. And, I, and I'll do a whole episode of this because it, 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 it does... I just, what I'm saying now doesn't give it justice, but I just want to, just want to, uh, just to give you that story of that girl who was slapped for receiving communion on the tongue. You know, aggravated. You know, you don't have to do this in the church. And I know many priests that offer the Novus Ordo would never do this, but lots of priests aggravate people who want to reverence the Eucharist. They make it as awkward as possible for you to receive communion kneeling on the tongue. They'll either stand two steps up on the, on, they will make it awkward. They will, oh no, no, in this church we all receive on the hand, we, we want uniformity here, no communion on the tongue. They don't promote it. They, they, they go out of the way to remove altar rails, for example, and make sure and aggravate people as much as possible to get rid of reverence for the Eucharist. You know, the kneeling and receiving on the, the tongue is an outward sign of an inward uh, encounter with Christ and for our kids it's a catechesis in itself it shows we physically believe in this incredible divine presence in the Eucharist and that's why I keep I keep talking about this um, and again it's not a sin to receive communion on the hand um, you know, the church has permitted this but has these Eucharistic reforms in the last 50 years given any fruits in the church? No, they haven't. No, they haven't. Is how we reverence the Eucharist in practice given any ref- fruits in the church? No, we haven't. We saw late in the closing mass of the Synod of Bishops in Rome that they have removed the cross from the altar. Now, they put the processional cross beside the altar. But I asked myself, okay, it was good enough up to now to have a cross on the altar. And I went through all the different photos of the different years. Paul VI, cross on the altar. Pope John Paul I, cross on the altar. Pope John Paul II, cross on the altar. Pope Benedict, a cross on the altar. Pope Francis, there was a cross on the altar during the Mass. And all of a sudden, for this synod and solidarity, the cross on the altar gets removed and they push the processional cross to the left of the altar. You know, us Catholics are wondering what is so wrong with, you know, reverencing our Lord in these ways. You know, you look at the Orthodox world, Eastern, they have a cross on the altar. You know, <laughs> we're all about synodality. We're all about, you know, trying to, um, to dialogue with, but like when we've turned the liturgy into God knows what, in reality, it's not engaging. And we can see, priests can see this, bishops can see this. It's not engaging. Because it's becoming an entertainment session. You know, and unless it's entertaining, you know, we know we have to bring people to a personal encounter with Christ. You know, that's what the Mass is, the praise and worship of God. Um, but it's interesting times in the church. Anyway, I leave this video here for future generations. This actually happened. And we'll blog about it more in years to come. There's a whole story behind this um, this family, which, you know, I, I thought was fascinating. But it was, I just thought, isn't it amazing, you know, the hand of Our Lady in something like this. And, uh, you know, I, I just couldn't believe it. When I, when, I, when I finally realized who this family was, and I said, wow, wow. You know, two days ago, I was saying I should contact this lady. And then the son contacts me, and he wouldn't have known this. So it was like the sign that I knew. I knew I could see the hand of God in this, you know, of all the people to contact me. And, you know, 
uh, it was her son and his her son and then and then me thinking gosh if if this woman was able to blog today about her grandchild her grandchildren i'm sure she would <laughs> i'm sure she would because i don't think she'd stand to allow her granddaughter to be slapped on the cheek for kneeling to receive communion on, on the tongue but anyway these are the strange times we live in pray for the church pray that our leaders and our bishops and our priests see what they're doing and understand what they're doing you know uh, we don't have to we don't have to treat the body blood soul and divinity of our lord like like this we don't have to we don't have to treat people that want to reverence the eucharist um, because there are there are many i would say millions of catholics around the world that will never receive communion on the hand never i would never never i said if it's good enough for, 50, for well over a thousand years to respect our lord in that way it's good enough for me if it was good enough for people during penal times in ireland it's good enough for me and uh, you know i just think we should show that we actually believe that it is the body blood soul and divinity of our lord you know maybe someday we'll see priests bring back the pattern so that if the Eucharist does fall, it, it, it doesn't fall on the ground. Maybe we could have a pattern brought back. You know, these things that the church has been racing to get rid of for the last 50 years. Patterns and altar rails and reverence, you know. And then we're wondering, oh, why in Germany are hundreds of thousands of Catholics leaving the German Catholic Church? Why are they doing that? Because they never, we, we never brought them to Christ in the first place. Pray for the church. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.